Yet another Premier League manager has unfortunately lost his job. Do, do you feel a little bit for Marco Silva and did you get the chance to talk to him uh, after the game and do you feel he's been a bit unlucky in that regard? Oh yes, for sure I feel, I feel for him. Um, and look, since I'm, since I'm in, um, in, in, in England, it's Everton is, uh, how we all know, and you know it better than I do, is a very, very ambitious club, so big history and all that stuff. And then um, there's on one club was in the same city, which has obviously a, a, a slightly positive development, and you, you, you try to catch up with that, not only with that, but improve your own situation. And that's for the manager always difficult. Uh, we said, when I came in, I said, um, first and foremost, we have to make sure that we don't carry our history as a backpack. Um, anymore, and um, for that you need a, we need positive signs, and that's a bit of a problem, I think. That, uh, the, but it was for each manager so far since I'm in, was at Everton really tricky, really difficult. Um, and for Marco, who is 100% an outstanding coach and manager, um, was how it looks now too tricky as well. So that's the situation, and it's not for sure not his fault. Alone, everybody knows that, but that's um, even all the Evertonians know that. But um, they thought they needed change, and so it's really that's the situation, that's the position of a, of a coach, of a manager, and um, we all <laughs> accept that in the moment when we choose the job. And um, so that's it, pretty much. But I had no, we had no real chance to talk after the game, um, before the game, a few words, after the game, directly a few words, um, but not nothing else. OK, looking ahead to, to Bournemouth on Saturday, um, those changes you made on Wednesday, there were a few eyebrows raised at first from, from many when the team sheet dropped. <coughs> does, does this really just prove to everybody how you're all working together as a squad and how together you are and very much believing in each other and, and the belief that they have in you as well? Well... To the outside as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was a really good team, which we send on a pitch. To be honest, so it was not. I was not one second in doubt about the quality of the players. Or, or but of course, you have to. You cannot be sure if you don't play week in, week out with the same group of players together. Like um, that, how it will be, timing-wise, rhythm-wise, shape-wise. I was pretty sure because that's what the boys showed in training. And these boys, which came on, they have a lot of training, even a busy schedule because we have. The, the, the starting lineup, which plays most of the time, but we don't train really. We play the game, we recover, we have a minus one session, set piece, stuff like that, and play again. But the other guys, they have done two sessions in between these games. So, and in these sessions, I could see that they are all in really good shape. That was the main reason for making the changes, apart from that we had to do it anyway, because of the situation we are all in, because of busy schedule. So, um, oh, it's, oh, it's, of course, then um, it's. You don't. You never know 100%. And it, well, I was really, really happy and pleased uh, with the way the boys showed up. That was a very important sign, a massive sign for us. But it was for one game, and now we have to show it again tomorrow. And um, yeah, we have to see who we can use uh, in that, especially in these three days between two games. So Wednesday, Saturday, that's always a massive challenge, um, and we have to be. Sensible and sensitive in the same moment um, with the with the decision making about the lineup because Bournemouth um, will be really demanding. They will ask for everything. So we have to to again to be really spot on, intense, all that stuff. They are not happy with their situation, so we need yeah a good intensity in that game again. And um, so that's what we try to make sure with the lineup. But then still the boys have to have to do the job and um, hopefully they can do it. As you know by now, Jürgen, we love football in England <laughs> at Christmas time. Yeah. Um, it'd be nice to be top of the tree at Christmas, wouldn't it? Um, if you win at Bournemouth on, on Saturday, you will be top at Christmas, guaranteed. I don't suppose you'd be worried by the fact that only three times in the last ten years, the club that have been top at Christmas, who haven't gone on to win the title, is Liverpool. It's about time you put that right. <laughs> Oh, I, I think I'm, I'm, I told you often enough and um, can tell you again that I'm really not interested in these kind of numbers, stats, whatever, this kind of history. 
but that's part of the deal when you are in a, in a in a in a good position then there are a lot of people who celebrate already there's some a lot of people who worry still and a lot of people who hope that you will still fail so that's it i don't listen to either of them to be honest so um, i'm completely fine i want to we want to try to win in, in bournemouth what that means for christmas um i never thought about and uh, what the christmas tree being top of the christmas tree means i never thought about so it's not really interesting we know that we are in a really really difficult situation with the games coming up we know that but we ex accepted it long ago but now we have to to deal with it and um, we are really positive in this moment but we have to we, we need to be lucky with um the um with the players that they can that they stay fit and that they stay healthy and all that stuff so many things i think in your private um area a lot of people are ill stuff like this yeah there's the first cuff so <laughs> immediately uh, on point and um so these are all things they, they they worry us much more than who will be first and what it means at uh, at, at christmas um it's really um the next game and the next game is tomorrow and um, the last game was two days ago so that's our situation and that's what we face and that's what we do with all positivity we can we can pull together <laughs> so, not yet <laughs> yeah, good. Hi. Uh, Sadio Mane has been nominated for the Premier League player of the month Lionel Messi speaking recently said it's a shame that he finished fourth in the Ballon d'Or and not higher do you think Mane is underappreciated in the world of football yeah internally of course not but in the world of football, I'm not sure so look the, the first three in the Ballon d'Or was then Messi Van Dijk Cristiano and then Sadio, that's an, a nice role anyway. So uh, having two players um, there shows, um, and a lot coming a bit, uh, what was, Mo was fifth, I think. Yeah, who was seventh? Another player was or not? Allison. Ali, right. So um, we obviously played a good season, and that's what they had to um, um, respect and what they obviously did. Um, yeah, Sadio is in an incredible shape, incredible. Um, it was always, since the first day since he's in, he was an incredibly important player. I, I, I think I can still remember his first goal, if it was the Arsenal goal. Um, having, running down the line, actually cutting inside, and then with the next step with the left foot in the far corner. So that was an incredible goal, and I can still remember it with all the other goals he scored since then. He made each year big steps, yes, and he's in a very good way, and it's probably, I heard after... Well, I saw after somebody showed me that um, Baresi was really positive about Virgil van Dijk, one of the biggest defenders I can imagine. If um, that's kind of being crowned by the king, and um, for offensive players, that's then maybe when Messi says something like this, and Sadio, especially in the game against Barcelona <laughs> here at home, he was quite impressive. It looks like we have three of him of the pit on the pitch, and. Um, he kept that shape. That's really good. If he stays healthy, he will have an incredible career um, in front of him, and um, I think he can climb in that um, in that table, Ballon d'Or wise. Um, but then some other people make the decisions. Not even Lionel Messi can decide that. But um, it's in a very, very good way, and um, I'm really happy for him. Two more big goals the other night for Divock Origi. We know how much. The fans love him. <laughs> yeah. Could you just give us an insight into the improvements that he's made over the past year and how big a player can he be in this Christmas period for you? Yeah, I'm, Div is unbelievably important for us. So it's um, what, what's really nice is since it, uh, um, I was really happy that Mr. Martinez was in the stadium because he could, watch his, could see him. His qualities because when he goes to the national team, he never plays a second. So he's, uh, um, that's always interesting when he's coming back in no game, actually. Um, so it was good that he saw that. Uh, we knew it before, um, but if needs needs a good feeling, needs to be in uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a confident mood, um, and then everybody knows what he's able to do. If you compare him with other players in our squad, then he has completely, they are all different, they have all different qualities and very often we used um, other three players up front, but Diff was always so important for us. And then it's really nice that he, as well, that he can show um, his importance as well in a game like this, which was obviously very important for all of us and scoring these kind of goals 
showed absolutely it was extra class. Yeah? That was um, exceptional. Both goals, the run at the end, it looks easy. The first goal, it was a sensational pass from Sadio, of course. But um, making these two steps between the centre halves and a goalie is that's um, that's what a striker has to do actually to see that opportunity and then use it. Um, so at the end, it was not the most difficult finish, but um, still a job to do. And the other one was just a world class goal. I uh, I don't see that that often. Uh, it was a good ball from the, from Dejan, but um, not easy to control, I would say. And that shows then his technical abilities. Uh, shooting, he scored <coughs> goals for us from all different angles, coming from the right wing, inside, uh, left wing, cutting inside, shooting along far, in, a, in a far corner. So all different kind of goals, yeah. Um, again, uh, and as well, really, really happy for him. And now probably we speak about Chuck, do we? <laughs> 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 and then we can speak about Adam. <laughs> but, but, but when you look at it, with Shaq, I suppose it's been it's been a frustrating time for him. How does he now build on that performance um, in the Merseyside derby? Because obviously you're the guy responsible for giving the players who don't obviously feature regularly that important game time. How do they? And, I, and the flip side, I suppose, the players who do play regularly, week in week out, do they get frustrated when? They're not selected to play and they're rested. Did they see that as a rest? To can deal with a situation like we have, not only we have, all, all football teams have in England, um, in this moment you need a smart squad. People with half a brain at least, the best way would be a full brain because I cannot explain things properly all the time. They have to understand it without telling them. So let me say it like this. It's like, um, thank God we have that. That's a, that makes my life much easier um, because Shaq was injured twice with the same injury, which he re-injured a little bit, and then that took time, and then coming back, um, it takes time, and then there's a situation that a team, a team on the, uh, is winning pretty much all the games, and then it's not, if you didn't get frustrated that you don't play, that's not smart. Because it's, that's how it is in football. You have then to work for the moment when you come on the pitch. And I don't expect perfection in the moment when you come on the pitch, but I, need to, but I expect the desire to show um, that you are good enough. And they all did that, and Chuck did that especially now. And he was completely fine before. He was in a really good mood, in a really good shape. And then coming on, that's the situation where you can deliver a performance like this. Same for all the others, and eh? so on. Yeah. If my team would not be smart, then we have the problem that other players get frustrated when they don't play the, the derby. But nobody was that, so that's that's how it is. Um, yeah, it's not so, it's not that complicated. You need just players who think about the situation, understand the situation. Because I don't make decisions out of a blue. It's not that I think, oh, today him and then him. It's, unfortunately, my life is not that funny. Um, and. Um, so there are always reasons for my decisions, and as long as you try to understand them, you can understand them, and um, the boys understand them. And that's um, uh, the situation now, and from now on, we play how I said. Um, yesterday, when I went home, I had an idea of, of for a lineup, and you come in this morning, and you hear the little things, the struggles here a little bit, there a little bit, no, no real concerns, but enough to think about if we really should do it. Um, and stuff like this, so you, you, you start new, if you want. And um, that will be now, that will be for the Salzburg game, that will be for the Watford game, that will be for the two games in Qatar, that will be for Leicester, <coughs> Wolves, whatever is coming up. Um, that's, that's how it is from now on. And, um, there's no time for rest, think about the situation. But still, we have to try to give the players a rest here and there, and all the others have to perform. Yeah, again, uh, slightly on the same point, because I think in the month of December last year, you made 30 changes. A lot of matches, you've got even more matches this time round. Uh, how much will the success of last year and the season overall worked out really well? How much does, does that sort of feed into what you will do this year? And is that a sort of, will you use the same sort of template as that? I don't know. No, it was not a plan last year to make 30 changes. It wasn't, I'm not sure that was the most or whatever in the, in the Premier League in that period. I have no clue, actually. Um, but it's the time where you have to make changes. That's clear. It's not a specific number. It's just um, um, the need of the situation. And that's what we will do, 100%. And 
I know when you are a football supporter, then you want to have the, you want to play your in your mind best eleven all the time. Um, clear, um, but it's not FIFA or whatever PlayStation where they don't um, need a rest. Obviously, I don't know how if they need a rest at, at a PlayStation. I have no clue, but. Um, um, it's just how it is. We have to. We have to do these kind of changes, and we will do. That's clear. As long as the boys give me the opportunity, we will do it. And um, it looks like we can do it in the moment. But f how I said, it was not. We, had, we did made five changes for the last game, and that was exactly the adult squad we had. So we have kids in behind, very good kids. Really, really enjoy working together with them. But if somebody is out. For tomorrow of the squad of yesterday, the next one will be really young. So, good, all okay. We we want to we wanted to have the situation. Now we have it, and now let's let's use it. And when you've got this really hectic schedule, how do you keep things ticking over in training? Because obviously, you know, you can't train the players with the same intensity that you would <coughs> you would do when there are less matches. But you've got to try and keep it as interesting as you can, and still try and stretch them. <laughs> We don't create Fantasia Land or whatever. We, we, we just do the, the, the right things. And again, the, the, the squad is quite experienced in that in that department. So we, we, we know that situation. We have to do the necessary things first and foremost. We can't. We have to um, respect all the qualities of the other opponents. They're all different. They're all different. The situation of the other opponents. So we try to prepare the boys as good as possible. But it's not that we can have exciting sessions a lot. But yesterday we had the players who were not. Involved um, in the starting lineup for the last game, so we had a session which I would have loved to be part of. As I would be still a player, so um, and of course we do that. But the guys who played, they had yesterday recovery, and today minus one means prepare them for the specific tactical needs of Bournemouth. Prepare them for the set pieces they have. Do our own set pieces, and that in a pretty short period because of the physical <laughs> aspect. And um, that's it. And then the main session, most exciting session, is tomorrow, the game. Oh. I saw you already. It's, it's December, these press conferences change up a bit. You know, yeah, you keep it exciting for me, that's nice. Um, you say you, you came in this morning and a few cons you heard some concerns about players. Um, are we, we talk about this weekend, who are we going to be likely missing anybody this weekend then? Or? Uh, in the moment, no. It looks, looks okay. But it's like somebody wakes up and feels a little bit here and there, and then I need to know that. When I know that, then I have to, to deal with that information. Nobody's ruled out yet. So that's good. Um, but <laughs> it's still three hours until we train. Um, so there's still a bit of time. Um, but th that's it. No, it should be. In this moment, they all should be fine. And your squad for the Club World Cup was named this week or confirmed this week. Um, and obviously, you, you, it's a full strength squad. I was wondering how much thought went into that and whether there was ever any consideration about splitting it because obviously you've got the, the Carabao Cup game as well. Or whether it was already decided that that would be a, a youth, a younger team, youth team. We had to do it like this. We had to do it like this. So um, I'm. I think it's a really nice opportunity. It's a really nice opportunity for, for, for the younger players to, to, to face that. I know that everybody <coughs> thinks no chance, but football is a wonderful game. And you can, um, if, you, I'm not sure if, if you know that, um, if you say it like this in England, but if you grow above yourself, like make the next step and, 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 and enjoy the challenge. And, and I would love to be part of that game, to be honest. And I hope all the boys and, and Critch and the coaching staff enjoy it as well. So whatever happens, it, um, I'm, if you want, I'm responsible even for that game not being there. So they have no pressure. They, 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 they just should, should fight for each inch um, on the pitch and enjoy themselves. They are playing in a wonderful stadium, one of the best in England for sure, great atmosphere, stuff like that. Go there and um, make your um, maybe not first, but second and third and fourth steps in, in, in the professional world of football. And um, so that's really nice. And for us, I have absolutely no, no chance to do it differently in the moment when it was clear when it will be played. And all the other dates were absolutely not possible for us um, to play it later or whatever. There was, there was non, not one date which was really would have worked 
at all because Aston Villa as well difficult and then there's rematches possible rematches in the FA Cup and stuff like this so it would have been um, mad as well so I said the situation is like it is and uh, but at the end we will not suffer because of that that's not possible we won the game against Arsenal a very exciting game I loved it and in that moment was clear now we have to find a solution that solution will not be perfect but we try to make it as perfect as possible so we go with a specific squad to Qatar, try there our best, and um, the other ones will play here. And if somebody thought I should have done it differently, you know, I cannot change that. Do you consider splitting squad at all? No, at all. No second. No. Last couple, Chris. Jürgen, you can't play against you tomorrow, but how impressed have you been with Harry Wilson on our form? He scored six goals in the league already this season. Oh, Harry. <coughs> I'm happy, <laughs> to be honest, that he cannot play against us. Each free kick is a proper, proper threat. Eh? So, um, yeah, but we don't have a doubt about Harry's shooting um, abilities, his skills in that part of the game. It's incredible, world class, for sure. Um, but Harry is at Bournemouth to improve all the rest of his game as well. So, being involved, being decisive, um, being between the lines, using his speed and all that stuff, and he, make, he makes big steps there. So that's that's really important, and um, they are now not in the best run. But even there, he scored two goals. Oof. The game before the last game, um, and um, nice goals as well. Um, not important enough at the end because they still lost, but um, he kept the game going, and um, so yeah, good, absolutely good. Thanks very much. See you.